Hey everybody, Jazzy here. You've probably heard about the new Reap What You Sow farms, right? We've all been talking about expensive fertilizers and giant crops that require undivided attention to watering, tending, and constant referencing of horrendously colored spreadsheets. But what if I told you that you could sustainably farm crops without ever giving them a drop of fertilizer? You don't even need a watering can to grow. Just plant the seeds, run around and terrorize the locals, then come back to harvest your crops. Today, I'm showing you how. Okay, so here's one tile of farm plot. It can be made by crafting a garden rigmajig at a science machine, then using it on the ground. You can then hoe the plot and plant seeds inside. Seasonal crops typically take three to four days to grow, and out of season crops take a few days longer. Before we talk about what you get from harvests, understand that no matter how much you neglect these plants, they will all eventually sprout into crops. So if you just want to plant generic seeds and use whatever pops up in your farm, then this is really all you need to know. Now, if you are trying to get the seeds for each crop to control what you produce, well, that's easy too. But first we need to talk about the stress system for plants. Basically, there are seven factors that can contribute to a plant's total stress. But put the pencil down. The whole point of this guide is that you don't have to memorize any of this. So every time a plant grows a stage, it checks all of the requirements requirements of these factors, and if one is not met, it adds one to a plant's total stress. Because a plant will change its state four times, this means that a completely ignored factor will eventually result in four total stress points. Now here's how the loot for a harvest is calculated. If a plant has one stress point or fewer when it matures, it will be a giant crop that can be hammered into tons of crops and seeds. If a plant has six or fewer points, it'll give the crop plus two seeds. If it has 11 or fewer, it'll give the crop plus one seed. Any more stress points than that, you just get the crop. Yes, giant crops are bay, but all you really need to keep farming is one seed, right? Harvest the crop, replant the seed, friggin' circle of life. So this one seed threshold is what we really want to focus on. How do we ensure that we consistently grow crops with 11 or fewer stress points? And most importantly, how do we do this without having to babysit our plants? Well, let's talk about the stressors that we can easily manage. First, there's the season. Craft a gardener hat and start researching the crops that grow in your plot. Right-clicking on the hat while wearing it will pull up your plant registry, and here you can find info on the native seasons for each crop. If the right crop is in the right season, then this stress factor is taken care of. The family stressor is easy too. Just plant at least four of the same crop close to each other, and this requirement will be met. To avoid overcrowding, don't plant more than 10 plants in one farm tile, and to help keep weeds away, just don't leave any empty holes in the ground. So that's four out of seven stress factors taken care of right away. That leaves us three remaining factors with 12 potential stress points. So we just need to take care of one more point and we're guaranteed a seed. And it so happens that we can easily do this right after planting the seed. Tend to your crop. That's it. Tend to it one time. Play some music or just give each plant a single tender pat on the head. We're not going to water the ground. We're not going to check the nutrient balance of the soil. We are going to completely fail those stress factors and we will still get a crop and a seed in three to four days. That is literally all you need to do to farm sustainably. Plant at least four of the same crop in the right season and tend to them one time. If you're not trying for giant crops, then this is absolutely all you need to know about the new farm system. Now, you could go the extra mile to water and tend to your crops at every stage, still completely ignoring nutrients, and get two seeds per harvest. But even when you only get one, you can feed your crops to a bird for an extra seed and easily double your crop size with every harvest. After you get the amount of desired seeds for a crop, just plant families in the right season and tend once. And you can do that forever and never have to think about fertilizer again. You're welcome. Now, if there is interest, I am happy to whip up a guide on how fertilizer interacts with crops in the new system. But to me, the most important thing to remember with all of this is that even if we're not playing Farming Simulator every day in a roguelike survival game, the new system is still more robust, more dynamic, and more efficient than any farming system we've ever had in this game. 
The bottom line is, unless you want giant crops, you can easily ignore nutrients, ignore fertilizer completely, and just grow crops without stressing any of the new mechanics. Pun absolutely intended. This guide was inspired directly from a post on the clay forms by Electroly, who gives one of the best explanations I've read on plant stressors and nutrient cycling. Link in the description. A few other authors should also be mentioned here. Lochnish has a posted Google Doc with numerous combinations of self-fertilizing crops for every season. Zeklo made one of the first and best explanations of the new farming basics. And Quartzbeam very graciously gave us a breakdown of the different configurations for making consistent giant crops. Thanks to all of you for writing, and I hope that my guides can represent the info accurately. That's all for now. Hope you enjoyed the video, and see you next time.